Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of us are living so this morning? The Bible says, let all the living souls do what? Let all the living soul do what? Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. How many of us still have our breath this morning? I'm not sure those at the back heard what I said. How many of us still have our breath this morning? If you know you still have your breath, I would like you to use it to praise the name of the Lord. So this morning you are going to sing a song to the Lord for a few minutes. Just, just raise a song. Just raise a song that comes to your heart. Just raise a song and let's worship the Lord together. Just raise a song and worship the Lord. Just raise a song and worship the Lord. Don't wait for your neighbor. Don't be disturbed by your neighbor. Just raise a song. Just focus on God on your own. The one the choir could not sing properly to you in your own estimation. Can you raise it to the Lord and sing to the Lord? Can you sing a song to the Lord? Hallelujah. You can sing in the spirit. You can sing in understanding. Paul said, I will sing in the spirit and I will sing in understanding. I will sing in the spirit. I can't believe that all of us are singing. If the whole of us, everybody in this house is singing, it should be thunderous. It should be thunderous. Like the mighty wave on the ocean. Can you raise a song to the Lord? I can't hear your song. I can't hear your song. I can't hear your song. Can you raise a song to the Lord? I can't hear you singing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't hear you singing. I can't hear you singing. The angels are waiting to hear your voice, to connect with you, and to sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. <clears throat> sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeroba Zakariabo Shakahambro Mazota. The Bible said, the redeemer of the Lord shall return with singing, with singing, with singing, with singing. Raise your voice to God. Hallelujah. Raise your voice to God. Yemoraka standaya. Teto taroba zataya bazota. Premozo promaka sheke ye promazoza. Into taroma zakolia traga polegashida. Thank you, Father. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness. Thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known.
the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. faithfulness, of your love, of your benevolence, of your generosity, of your kindness, of your goodness, because you are good, and you are great, and your mercy endures forever. Lord, here is your word this morning, we pray. As we share your word, that you will reach out to every one of us at the very point of our needs this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to continue the part two of what we started on Wednesday. The part two of what we started on Wednesday. Uh, I know very many of us were not around on Wednesday. So I'm going to share in a way that you will understand what we are talking about and you understand where we are coming from. We started talking about grace for a fresh start. So you may call this one part two, grace for a fresh start. We just read from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 20, but actually we will have pushed it to verse 24. That story is a very common story, and it's the story of what the Bible writer subtitled the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. I'll be using that story this morning to illustrate the point I gave to us last week. I gave us, I mean, last Wednesday, yes, last week, I gave us three points. I'll be adding one to it today, making it four issues that I'm raising from that topic from that title, but we'll now be using the story of the prodigal son to illustrate those uh, items that we listed on Wednesday. Number one, I said, God gives grace. I believe you can remember, God gives grace. He's the God of all grace. That is what the Bible calls our God. God is the God of all grace. So he gives grace. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord God is a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that love him. The Lord God is a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. And no good thing 
will live with old from them that love him. John chapter 1 verse 16. For out of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Blessings upon blessings. Gifts heap upon heap. Out of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. God gives grace. He gives grace. We also cited James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness of change or shadow of turning. I think I will be, I'm quoting from KJV. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness of change or shadow of turning. God gives grace. He gives grace. He's the God of all grace. Praise the Lord. He's the God of all grace. And of course, Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that brings salvation. Somebody was thanking God for the gift of salvation. You see, it appears common. When we say, well, your testimony is, I thank God for salvation. Many people will be wondering, is that, uh, I mean, say specific things. As if salvation is a general thing. Salvation is not a general thing. Salvation is a great gift. It comes via the grace of God. If I am not saved, I will not be standing here before you. The grace of God located me over 32 years ago. Located me in my darkness. Located me in my ignorance. Located me in my veiled situation. The grace of God tore the veil. The grace of God destroyed the shackles of hell, shackles of sin. The grace of God transformed me and made me a VIP. It is the grace of God. Yes, it's the grace of God that makes me a, a VIP. The same grace can make you. The same grace can make you. You know, the same grace that saved Paul from a notorious sinner, a notorious murderer, and turned him to a servant of God, a writer, a missionary, an apostle at the same time, the same grace is available unto you. Titus 2.11 For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men and is appearing to you today in Jesus' name. I can't hear a better amen. It's appearing to you today in the name of Jesus. The grace of God will locate somebody and transform you. Your parents will see you after this semester. They will give glory to God. Your parents will no longer cry over you. They will no longer spend any how over you, wasting their money over you. Because the grace of God will change your life. The grace of God will transform your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So God gives grace. In fact, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. God gives grace. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, How great is the love of all, is the love of God. How marvelous is the love of God. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, not verse 9. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. He said, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed. A version says, What manner of love the Father has lavished upon us. Am I right? There is a version like that, right? What manner of love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. See, friend, it is not a small thing to be called a child of God. It is not a small thing to be called a child of God. Many of us, because we came from a very low background, a very poor background, we don't even want people to know our background. We don't want people to even know where we stay. We don't want people to even come along with us to our house. But if you are a child of God, you should forget your physical background. You should know that you are now a child of the King of Kings. John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he rights, authority, to become a child of God. Not those who are born after the man of the flesh, but those who are born of the spirit. Hallelujah. What manner of love the Father has lavished upon us. Do you know what it means to lavish something? That is in excess, in abundance, in surplus. What manner of love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be called 
the children of God. Hallelujah. Do I have a child of God in the house? If you are a child of God, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. You see that scripture? That is the reason the world does not know us. Because they don't know him. I am a child of God. Praise the Lord. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. The Bible says he has given us his spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That is the language of intimacy. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallelujah. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves. Hallelujah, I'm no longer a slave. So that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. I wrote a book, that was my second book, From Slavery to Sonship. It's out of stock now. That is where I pick that topic from. From slavery to sonship. The spirit you receive now has brought you into sonship by adoption. Whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. I have a father, oh, almighty father, ah, he is king of kings and lord of, of lords. Lord. I, I have a father, I have a father, I have a father, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, almighty Hallelujah. father, oh, he is king of kings and lord of lords. and I that are children of God have come into a big house, into a big family. The Bible says he set a table before me he brought me into his banqueting hall and his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. David captured that experience. He said, thou preparest a table before me and before my enemies. You anoint my hair with oil and my cup run over. There is abundance in the house. He lavishes it on us anyhow. He just releases it upon us anyhow. That is the grace we have as children in the house. But you see, this guy took his family generosity for granted. He did not appreciate abiding in the house. He thought living independent of the father will make him to look like a good guy, like a great guy, somebody who has arrived. He has forgotten that it is in fellowship with the father that made him who he was. So he came and said, Father, it is time for me to live independent. You know that is how so many believers are living independent, in the name of grace. They don't know that in separating yourself from me, you can do nothing. So the guy did not know that what actually boosted his status was because he was still in the house. So he got to the father and said, give me what belongs to me. And he disappeared. That is Luke chapter 15 from verse, from verse uh, 11. He said, give me what belongs to me. And he left for a distant country. Are you here, friends? that you are on your way to a distant country? Are you here, friend, that you're already separating yourself from the fellowship of the Father? Are you here, friend, that you are already, you know, engaging the grace of God in riotous living? Are you here that 
All you are claiming is grace, 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 grace. But you don't know that the source of supply is already severe. It will soon run out. So the guy took the advantage of the abundance in the house, the generosity in the house, you know, the, the benevolence of the father. And he left for a distant country. Look at so much grace that this guy had. So much grace. So much opportunity that this guy had. But he left for a distant country. And that took us to the second thing we raised. And where is it that grace can be abused? The grace of God can be abused. And we saw this guy abusing the grace of God. Paul made a plea in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. He said, We beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you take not the grace of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Not to receive God's grace in vain. The grace of God can be abused. Opportunities can be wasted. Are you here this morning and you are wasting the grace of God? You are abusing the grace of God. The grace of God can be abused. It can be abused. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Those of us who were at the training yesterday, Pastor BJ was sharing with us an encounter he had when he was watching a football match between Chelsea and one other club like that. He said as he was watching the match, suddenly... The Holy Spirit began to teach him something. The Holy Spirit was asking him, look at those who are on reserve, who are benched. How many of us are football lovers here? Imagine this is the field of play where action is taking place. Where Evra and the other guy were sitting is the reserve. Look at David, look at Evra, look at Joshua. What's the name of the fourth guy? Eh? Ephosa. Oh, great. I used to have one Ephosa like that. He's a very great guy. But they are all on reserve. Look at them, they are on reserve. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, football lovers, as the match is going on, what do you think will be the prayer in the heart of those on reserve bench? No, just tell me sincerely. If you are on reserve, what will you be praying for? You are skillful, you have ability, you have energy, and you are benched. What will you be praying for? Let one of them just play rubbish and the coach will just send him out. If none is playing rubbish, you'll be praying. Let one just, let them just give him one injury. Let him just come out so that I can come in. See, as those guys on reserve, as they are standing and they are doing like this, it's not that they love their friend that are playing. They are actually praying. When will I show forth? Because they carry the same grace, but they don't have opportunity to show forth. Let me tell you, if you waste the grace of God, you'll be out. You'll be out of action. God will discard you. And he will bring those who can utilize the grace. He will bring those who can maximize the grace. He will bring those who can, you know, who can put the grace to work. Sometimes you see very fantastic player. They have injury here. They will put bandage. They are still playing. Some, they already have injury, but they will just pretend as if nothing was happening because they want to remain on the field of play because they have a lot of people that can, that can come in instead of them, that can play the same, the same, the same uh, whatever he is playing. So I see believers today, you are committing immorality. You are still saying the grace of God is there. God will soon discard you. He will soon set you apart. Because the Bible says, let them that carry the vessel of the Lord be holy. Oh, because you can still speak in tongues. You can still say, Akrababa, stand up. You think the grace will continue to be at work? It is just on reserve. Very soon it will deplete completely. And you will cry for help. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, my car has a device that it will be telling you the number of kilometers the remaining fuel can carry. So when I'm traveling, I'm confirming all the time. Okay, from here to Lagos, 120 kilometers, okay. The fuel says 
can still carry 145 kilometers. So I'm good to go. But you will be a foolish driver if you confirm that the remaining fuel can only carry 85 kilometers per hour. And the journey you are covering is 145. And you are still driving. You are seeing filling station, you don't refer, you are just ignoring them. It will soon finish and you will be stranded. There are so many of us right now, under the sound of my voice, you are living on reserve. You better come back to the father's house. Don't travel far again. That guy had a lot of stoppage, but his eyes was at the distant country. The Bible said distant because he's so far from the house. He was completely disconnected from the watch care of the father. He was completely disconnected from the correction of brethren. Completely disconnected. Now you are here, you have changed your friend. Because that friend you are working with has been on your neck, telling you what you are doing is not good. So you discard that friend. Because it's becoming a thorn in your flesh. You don't want somebody that will put eyes on you, that will help you to maintain fellowship with the father. Your eyes is just on the distant country and you kept going without looking back. You think all that you carry from the father's house is enough to live your life independent of anybody. I challenge you this morning to come back. That grace will soon be exhausted because you are already abusing the grace of God. That grace will soon be exhausted. You are abusing the grace of God. So come back to the house before it is too long. Praise the Lord. I remember in our university days, there is this beloved sister who, you know, who felt, well, now I'm on campus, I am free. No serious scrutiny, watch care of the father again and all that. So we resume the same year, but we know ourselves. So she just started well, but later she just joined the company of this you know, this set of ladies on campus, and you can see them, they are different. You know, they started changing their dress and all that, and all that. And we are wondering what is going on. So the junior sister resumed the following year, and they were to stay in the same room. He said, how can you stay in the same room with me? It's not possible. Because she doesn't want any interference. But thank God, before it was launched, she got herself back. And, but between that space, oh my God, she was traveling very, very far. She was already traveling very, very far. How far have you gone this morning, friends? Don't assume the grace is still there. The grace can only be supplied as long as you remain in the house. Don't assume the grace is there. The grace can only be supplied as long as you remain in the house. Look at what Paul said. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. He said, the grace that was given to me was not in vain. Rather, I walk harder than them all. I didn't take the grace for granted. I walk harder. I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Are you putting that grace to work? Praise the Lord. Are you putting that grace to work? Now, can you imagine those guys that are on reserve uh, bench, do you know that they don't just sit down and say, well, when it is my turn, I will come in. What do you see them always doing? They will stand up, they are still doing like this. They are not playing anything, no. And they may not play at all in that match, but they are still doing like this. A match is going on. And they don't have any hope of coming in. But they are still not taking the grace for granted. They are still exercising the grace. They are still putting themselves in shape. Friends, don't be deceived. If you don't utilize the grace, it will disappear. Do you know that even if they don't come in in that match, whenever they are still having any riaza, they will still go, right? They will still go there. They will still do like this with other people. They will still do like this. But there's no hope that they will still come in. But they keep going, they keep going, they keep going. One day, the opportunity will show forth. There are some of them that they only play for three minutes and they change the entire story. And they became a star. Praise the Lord. What is the grace of God that is 
becoming redundant and inactive in your life, you must activate that grace today so that you can have a fresh start. So that you can have a fresh start. Can I tell you, friends, especially with respect to our exams and results and all that, forget about what has happened last semester. Something is seen in you that you did not use. Begin to use them this semester. Something is in you that you have not used. Begin to use them this semester. I heard the story of W.F. Kumuyi. Kumuyi said many people thought he has been brilliant all along. He said he has not been brilliant all along. He said, they talk to himself. I will come back to that. That will be my last emphasis. He said, I talked to him. He kept having bad results from year one, year two, year two. Bad result. So he said, the thing done on him that this is the last year of living secondary school. If you fail, you are going nowhere. He said, I talked to myself. I activated all the nerves in my brain that have remained dormant. You need to activate the grace of God. You need to bring it back to work. Praise the Lord. You need to bring the grace of God back to work. Hallelujah. So opportunity can be wasted. Grace can be abused. Grace can be underutilized. Hallelujah. All right, number three that we emphasize. God restores and gives opportunity for a fresh start. God is a God of restoration. Isaiah chapter 43. He says, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. For I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. For I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. I will even make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. God is a God of restoration. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 23 to 24, he said, I will bring to you the latter rain and the former rain in the same year. I will restore to you the years that Kankawam and Pamawam, my great army, the great locusts have eaten. I will restore. I want you to talk to yourself. God will restore my fortune back to me. That's what we read in Psalm 126. God is a God of restoration. In other words, God is a God of second chance. God is a God of second chance. God will give you second chance. God will give you second opportunities. God will bring back all the wasted years, all the wasted opportunities. God will restore it. God is a God of restoration. He brings back opportunity if you are ready. It will test you if you are still ready to use the same opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In fact, you are too young to be wasting your years. Because what I read in my Bible is, remember the Lord God in the days of your youth. When night has not come, where are you will say, I don't have any interest in them. You are too young to be wasting your years. You are too young. Because some people at 30, they have already accomplished anything that any man could ever accomplish in their life. And here you are, you are 17. You are above average already. Because half of 30 is 15. There is hardly anybody here that is 15. Most of you, you are 16, 17, 18. So if at the half of your, of your days, you have not gotten your bearing, when will you get your bearing? When will you get your bearing? Joseph had a dream of greatness at 17. And he experienced the fulfillment of that dream at 30. And Joseph ascended the throne as a prime minister in Egypt at 30. At 30. You better get your bearing right. Time is going. Opportunities are running out. Catch it before it goes. God restores opportunity. He restores. Now back to our story, Luke chapter 15. God came to restore opportunity to this young guy. God came back to him. God gave him the second chance. 
The door to the father's house is not yet closed. You can see it in verse 20 of Luke chapter 15. When he returned, when he returned, the father has been, in fact, tradition have it that the father, since the day the guy left the house, the father has been on the door every morning, every evening, looking out for the guy, whether he's coming back. So it remained for the guy to make a decision to return. Many of you, the reason you are still enjoying what you are doing, that you know it's not good, is because you think, well, I've gone so far, I don't know if God will still have me back. Chaplin, if you know me before, I used to pray very well, but now I'm so, I'm so, I'm so dry. I don't think I can go back to that, to that good old days. You can come back. God restores. He's a God of second chance. He restores. And I'm seeing somebody that God wants to restore this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, the fourth thing that we didn't mention on Wednesday, which is the last thing for this morning, is you must resolve in your heart to be restored. You must resolve in your heart to be restored. Now, many of us, we get it wrong. We blame the devil. Ah, it's the devil. The devil will say, what am I hearing? Me? Me that I'm in my house. So maybe you have seen so many people that they apprehend on television and they will say, please just forgive me, it's the devil. This one says it's the devil. This one says it's the devil. is the ah, Abba. 1,000 people at the same time. I can't go everywhere. I'm not in the present. Ah, is it me? It's not the devil. Many of you don't know that you have the power of we and the keys in your hand. It's not in the hands of the devil. It's not in the hand of the devil. The Bible says, he who breaks the edge, the serpent will bite. So it's you that breaks the edge. It's you that opens the door. I have come to realize that the devil can never force you to do what you are not ready to do. The devil cannot. If any man is tempted, don't let him say, I am tempted of God. For anyone is tempted when he is drawn after his lustful desire. And when the desire is grown, that is James chapter 1, I think verse 15 or so. When the desire is grown, it results into death. So is everyone. Everyone is drawn. Yes. Can you give us verse 14? James chapter 1 verse 14. But every man is tempted. Okay, let's start from verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone. Verse 14 now. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. So it starts with evil desire. And evil desire starts from the heart. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. It says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it cometh the issues of life. Another version renders it like this. Be careful how you think. For your thought shape your life. The decision is always yours. The weak power is within you. Yes. It's not in the hands of the devil. The devil is only knocking. Hoping that you will release the key. Or you will open the door. But for the devil to force the door of your heart open, never. He doesn't do that. And he doesn't have the power to do that. The power is always with you. The power is always with you. The Bible says in Matthew, I think chapter 19, verse 15 or 15, 19. It says, for out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts. Murder, adultery, fornication, theft. Out of the heart proceeded evil thought. Out of the heart proceeded evil thought. And the devil doesn't have power over your heart. So who does? You. It's you. It's not the devil. That is the victory you have. That is the power you have. That the devil doesn't have authority or power over my heart. 
It doesn't. It doesn't have that power. You have the key. You have the key, I have the key. Now, how do you release the key of your heart to the devil? Before he now plants his desire. It is through what you see and through what you hear. That is how the devil gains entrance to your heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart. It's a military terminology. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it, come the issues of life. Guard your heart. So you live a loose life. The devil will, have, will, have, will just have every day over your life. You have to be deliberate. You have to be determined. You have the willpower. The devil doesn't have it. You have the willpower. So you have to resolve that you want to have a fresh start. From our story. The Bible says, I think in verse... Is it verse 19 now? Or verse 18? Luke chapter 15. The Bible says... And when he came back to his senses, may the Lord restore you back to your senses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And when he came to himself, please can you give us a version that used the word senses? When he came to his senses, may you come back to your sense in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That is the key. Coming back to your sense. That is where you activate the power of your will and say, what is going on with me? Enough of these three hours on Facebook. Enough. That is willpower. Praise God. I have a student here. She submits her phone every semester, a week to the exam. She will drop it in my office. That is willpower. That is somebody who wants to take charge. That is willpower. But you, if the examiner is careless, you will see what's TikTok, even in your exam. Yes. If they should allow that, you will still quickly check TikTok and be laughing during the exam. <laughs> and then what is going to say, come and see this TikTok. Hey, sorry. Wait, question two. Okay, question two. It's a matter of willpower. Oh, tell yourself, enough of gambling. You can do it. Oh, yes, you can do it. <laughs> you know, Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes so that I will not look lustfully against a naked woman. That's what Job said. David said, I have made a covenant with my mouth. You can do the same. Come back to your sense. Oh, boy, come back to your sense. Can you tap your friend? Come back to your sense. You know what Jesus said? Awake, thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. You must awake first before light will come. Yes. When he came back to his senses, you see, his understanding was restored. You know, when Nebuchadnezzar was turned to goat and he was eating grass, the Bible says he came back to his senses and his understanding was restored. May your understanding be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. There are certain things you do that doesn't make sense. You will ask yourself, how can a human being be doing this kind of a thing? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Does it make sense that you use your school fees to play Naira bet? It doesn't make sense. You have lost your sense. <laughs> and your sense must be restored. Oh yes, you have lost your sense. You have lost your sense. You must tell yourself, you must speak to yourself. And say, Shegun, arise. Come back to your sense. What is going on with you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, we used to have one man in our town in those days. He would be heavily drunk. And he would be shouting from downtown. He would come up. <laughs> People would say, ah, Baba, is one boy, Hey! Ah, 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 ah. Night at you. He has a wife, he has children. My mother will say, What? Baba, can you know what? Because you saw me coming, you lock your door. Hey, ah, ah. And 
and he will go and sleep. Wake up the second day and he will go back to the same thing. Oh, yes. Don't deceive yourself. You don't need any deliverance. Deliver yourself. Come back to your sense. Don't say, pray for me, pray for me. No, 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 no. The weak power, nobody has taken it. This one is in the hand of the devil. It's in your hand. The Bible says he came back to his senses. Ha. And he told himself, what's going on? Even slaves, my father, they don't eat goat. I mean, they don't eat grass. Abba. He even wanted to eat grass, so nobody gave it to him. And they said, oh boy, this one is for goat. It's not for you. Just relax. He said, no, fool. He said, no, you, don't, you can't eat it. Ah, you won't. Yeah, yo, you can't eat it now. Yo. Yeah, you are a big man now. Senior citizen. How can you eat that kind of thing? You better don't deceive yourself. Some people, they say, ah, Abba, Shegun, you now. I trust you now. I trust you now. Abba, you. You have the brain now. You have the brain. You are failing. <laughs> you better tell them I'm failing you. It's not a matter of brain. Talk to yourself. Part of being resolved is to humble yourself. Yes. Humble yourself. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. <laughs> shall humble. Some people don't want to humble themselves. Oh boy, humble yourself. That chemistry, you don't know it. Go to the person that knows chemistry and say, oh boy, I can see that you score A. I score you. Help me. Because nobody will write in your result. This A is at the expense of or the instance of Kunle who help him. Is he in your transcript like that? You don't know the thing. And you are doing, oh boy, you are pocketing and you are, you are saying, what are you doing there? Chemistry 101. <laughs> Chemistry 101, I don't mind that man. We go show him Pepe. And you are showing yourself Pepe. <laughs> you better wake up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, our VC shared something, I think, in the course of last week in the meeting. He said when he was in Italy, there was this work he was doing, and he was not getting it. He was reading, was not getting it. But he discovered that in all the paper he was reading, there is a particular name that keeps recurring from Brazil. Ah, and he knew that his roommate is from Brazil. And he tapped him. This name, <laughs> the man said, Nah, me now. Ah, this is it. He don't finish. You know what you will do? You will do this one. Me, I will do this one. Let's collaborate. He said that was the end of it. But you, you are too proud. Eh? You are too proud. You don't want to ask. You don't. You, you know there is a man like that in the Bible. The Bible says he said, "Beg, I cannot beg." Eh? He cannot beg. He cannot humble himself. So he resorted to forgery. He was forging paper. How many of us know that story in the Bible? The man said, "I can't." For your still worship. And he said, Ah, I can't beg. I'm ashamed. So let me, how much do you? He said, it, Right, 17. I will cover the rest all. You know that's how some of us behave. You can't humble yourself. What is the big D in EABA, please? Do you have extra? My money has run out. Can you please give me like 500 naira? Ah, yes, I can even give you 1,000 naira. Humble yourself. Eh? Instead of going to borrow online, borrow from me a BA that will not collect again. Huh? <laughs> She's a very rich lady. Oh. <laughs> so if you are in need of money, meet her after this. <laughs> now let's begin to round off. The Bible says, when he came back to his senses, now, he told himself the truth. He said, I will arise. Tell somebody to arise. I want to say it again. Arise. That is the second thing. You must arise. You must change location. You must be displaced from that location. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man who does not walk at the cancer of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinner, nor see it, in the seat of mockers, you can't experience a change by keeping company with folks who have brought you to where you are. You must change your friendship. You can't experience a change by remaining in the same location. 
You know that shawarma joint is where it keeps you into problem every time. Don't go to shawarma joint again. Stay in your room and read your book. Stay in your room. If you know shawarma will tempt you, suya will tempt you, don't go there again. Eat biscuit and water in your room and sleep. So that suya will not lead you into borrowing. And you find yourself in the same circle. Is see how we arise. He left the distant country. I will arise. And I will go back to my father. I will go back to the same place where I started from. You know where you started from. You know where you are falling from. Go back to the same place. He said, I will arise. I will go back to my father. Now look at what he said. And he told the truth. He said, I will get to my father. And I will say to my father. Father, I have seen again. See, that is the most interesting part in that story for me. All the things the guy was doing, he thought he was doing it against his father. But when he came back to his senses, you know, he told the truth. He said, I will go back to my father and I will say to my father, Father, that passage, Father, I have seen against the heaven and against you. Many of you don't know that all that you are doing is not to your dad, though. <laughs> you see, sometimes I pity a lot of us because we think you are doing that man. And because our parents, too, sometimes they don't understand. They pet us. Okay, kilo, nilo, nsi. Okay, my bill, okay. To her with kilo, nilo. My Smuro said, after you have done your best, you have tried all you could, and the guy is not yielding, leave him alone. He will live his life. If you kill yourself because of him, he will still live his life. And you, you have died. I tell a lot of parents, I say, sir, you better leave this guy. He will change. And if he doesn't change, don't kill yourself. You have tried your best. Keep smoking. Eh? Keep doing naira bet. Keep gambling. And you think you are doing your father. You are doing yourself. He's not against your father. It's against your destiny maker. It's against God. So the guy said, I will arise and I will tell my father, I have sinned against the heaven. That's the first thing. So many of you, the first thing is to confess to God this morning before you now write your father. You know, I do say, I say at this stage, you will tell your father. But first of all, settle yourself with God. But you will still tell your father. Praise the Lord. Tell your father. I have sinned against the heaven and I have sinned against you. Finally, you don't realize that you are the one that is just wasting your time. When you return to the Father in genuine repentance, you will be accepted in the beloved. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. He said, In the time of favor have I have had you, in the acceptable time I have accepted you. For today is the day of salvation, today is the day of God's favor. Why are you running? Why are you dodging? Why are you hiding at where he cannot cover you? Why come to God? Who knows all things? He know, the Bible says in Psalm 139, before a word land on my tongue, you know it. If I pitch my house in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the space, you are there. If I hide myself in darkness, even darkness will come light unto you. So why are you hiding from God? Why not come to God? So that I can save you to the uttermost. Praise the Lord. You know, I share on Wednesday, there was this guy, he was a friend to my elder brother, Philip by name. I don't know where he could be now. He may even be yelling me now, I don't care. You know, he was a spare from maybe you. But he had the grace that that expulsion fell into the same period of strike. You know, there was a time maybe you had about one, more than one year strike. So he was playing during about in town. Nobody cares now because everybody is on strike. But strike was over. And people started leaving the village one after the other. This guy was there. Ah, anyway. Hi, my Philip. Glory alone. Ah, no. You can't have more. You can't see now. They will just be playing. They, won't, they, will, they will not start work now. They will, ah, ah. Until the village was becoming dry of students. So Mr. Philip was faced with reality. What are you covering? This morning, I want you to pray. I want to have a fresh start. I would like you to bow down your head and tell the Lord, 
I want to have a fresh start. Enough, 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 enough. Enough, enough, enough is enough. I want to have a fresh start, a fresh beginning. It is possible. Friends, I want to see you flying. I will be glad that you fly. I will be glad that you are restored. <laughs> and God is here. He wants to restore you. Don't mind your friend. After all, they have been with you and they have never helped you. Why are you minding them? Settle your case with God today. That grace is here. That grace is here. That grace is here. Do you want to receive the grace of God afresh today? Do you want to receive the grace of God afresh today? That grace is here. I would like you to talk with God. There is a grace for a fresh start. Hallelujah. Grace, grace. God's grace, grace that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Grace. Very quickly, do we have anyone here who wants to experience a fresh start? It doesn't matter what you have done before, just forget about that. The Bible says forget about the past. And I'm talking to those who even thought they have had a very good past. Good grade, good whatever, but you still know that you have capacity to go forward. I would like you to come forward so that I can pray with you. Don't mind your friend. Please just rush forward. We don't have much time. Dark is the stand that we can not hide what can avail to wash it away look there is flowing a crimson tide whiter than snow you'll maybe do we have anyone who want to join grace 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 God's grace, grace that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all. I'm waiting for the rest. Can you please make it faster? Marvelous, infinite, much less grace. Freely bestowed on all who believe. Show that our longing to see his best. With your this moment is grace receive oh yes grace 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 hallelujah god's grace oh yes grace that we hide on and cleanse within grace ago I came for a meeting in Ibadan from school and uh, it was a very powerful meeting in a very small hall like that and another call was raised I was the only one that found myself in the front I was running on the ground because I needed to move forward I was not committing sin as such but I just feel like my life is stuck I was a leader, a BSF leader 
But I felt within me that I needed a shift. I needed to move forward. I was prayed for. I was not satisfied. I stayed behind. I wanted to see the man of God. And it was the beginning of a fresh start in my life. So I would like to, I will pray with you now, but I would like you to see our counselors. Some of you may need to pour out something, a body to share a concern. Some of you may need a further counsel, a prayer, a follow-up. Please don't hesitate to take advantage of that. So please, I would like our counselors, our relational disciples to please be on guard. I will ask them after praying with them, I will ask them to just step out a bit. It will not take time so that if you have a need like that, they can connect with you. Father, you are the giver of grace. You are the God of all grace, all manner of grace. Lord, these ones before you this morning, they need grace, specific grace in specific areas. I don't know the areas, but you know it, oh God. You know their deepest need. You know their concern. You know their worries. Lord, you know their agitation. You know their fears. Holy Spirit, I pray, as you have helped the people of old, I believe you are still the same. You can help these ones. So, Lord, I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, because you give grace and glory, release grace upon their lives. Release grace into their vessels, in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace they need to move on from here. The grace they need to step on from here. The grace they need to break into a new level. Father, release upon them in the name of Jesus. Lord, strengthen their hands, O Lord. Strengthen their arm, O Lord. Strengthen their legs, O Lord, so that they can run and never to be weary again. So that they can walk and never to faint again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.